All right, how's everyone doing? I am Rich Chalenza. Thanks for checking out the Rich Chalenza Show. So what I'm going to call this podcast is not everything has to be extreme. Uh, if you know anything about me, I you know I put up a lot of videos on fitness um, and many other things, but I'm going to start with that, not getting into working out or any of that, but I realize trying to help as many people as I can with exercise and fitness, at least from my perspective, because I'm not a trainer. I've just kind of lived it my entire life is a lot of people thinking that when they do need to go work out or they do need to do something, it has to be extreme. When they also want to lose weight, it has to usually a lot of times be a lot more weight than they're probably going to lose. And I get you want to aim high, right? Same with building muscle, okay? I have nothing, I aim for whatever you want to go after, but realize sometimes that going extreme a lot of times is not helping you. I believe it's hurting you because I don't think a lot of people in this day and age realize how much time and effort certain things take just because the way society is kind of set up now. I think a lot of information, for instance, can come at us very quickly. And I'll just say this when I was working out back to that, um, you know, I was reading magazines and I I didn't know how long necessarily it was going to take me to get into the shape I wanted to get into. I didn't know if it would be months, years, decades. I really didn't, uh, especially starting off as a kid. But nowadays, it seems like there's a lot of these pitches, I guess you could say in bullshit, saying if you do this for this amount of time, uh, you know, this is going to happen. And I'm here to tell you, most likely a lot of what you're listening to is bullshit. Not only fitness, I'm talking... Maybe it's, you know, and I've been doing podcasts and videos on fake gurus and all these different types of things. And I'm sorry if you've heard it before, but you have to understand you live an entirely different lifestyle than any person you're watching on YouTube, any, uh, you know, anybody's program you're buying, any videos you're watching. And you can come close a lot of times, I think. But the reality is no matter what in your life, I think going extreme again is just not the answer. What I do think is great is if you just kind of slow your roll a little bit and learn as much as you can about whatever you want to go after, okay? And I always talk about, I call myself the sloth, but I'm definitely, or a turtle, whatever the case, I am the guy who's going to start off small. I do it in the gym. I do it in life in general. Most people I've ever seen off the gate that want to really ramp it up, kick it in the ass, they start off hot, they always usually die out. In my opinion, not everybody, I should say. But a lot of people exhaust themselves at the beginning. I'm here to tell you, don't do that shit. I don't care if it's a podcast, YouTube channel. I don't care if it's building a website or building a business. Go into it. It kind of reminds me of, you know, I drive all the time throughout my life. I have literally drove millions of miles in the vending business and then traveling. And I'm kind of somebody who cruises. Now, somebody, some people may say I drive too slow, and I get it. And believe me, I like fast cars and stuff. But I realized when I was younger, when I was driving fast like an asshole, it, if something came up, I had usually not enough time to react a lot of times. Okay? Don't get me wrong. I was very alert. Maybe when you're driving, you know, I think there are stats where you drive faster. A lot of people claim they're more alert and blah, blah, blah. But let's go back to now my, for the last 20 years. I've been cruising. And the reason I cruise is I kind of want to see what, for one, well, I should say this first. I'm cruising because if anybody makes a move at me, I usually have that extra second or two to react to it. Where I think if I was speeding, I don't have it. But here's the other thing I do as well. And maybe you could try this if you're, try, you know, and I'm watching me get in an accident, but I very seldom for as many. Thousands upon thousands of hours of driving I've done. I'm very fortunate regarding accidents. This is the other thing I do as well, and I think it incorporates in life. When I drive, I always try to make sure nobody's in front of me, too close, obviously. Nobody's behind me, and nobody's to the left or right of me. You might be like, well, I live in you know Chicago, New York, LA. If you drive in those places, major cities. I drive everywhere, and I get it. When there's traffic, there's traffic. If there's a lot of people on the road, I get it. I've even lived in California, and I've drove 
all up and down California from the bottom to the top, up and down. I spent even a month driving in Manhattan. I've spent my life, a big part of my life driving in Chicago. So I get that it's not always going to be like that. But if you have the opportunities, make sure no one is around you to kind of come in and cause chaos or turn into you or hit you from behind. And it can happen. I'm not saying it's, it, it, someone could blow a light, someone blows a stop sign. I get it. I can't prevent everything. But by me not, again, being around anyone that can kind of damage me, I guess you could say. And I do that in life as well a lot of times because I think with extreme things a lot of times, I guess you could say if you're going in to start a business or something, you're doing, you're going full throttle ahead. And I get you want to make, you know, certain deadlines and you want to get certain things done and you want to really ramp it up like I said. And I think sometimes by speeding into things, we're naive, and that's where the damage is where, again, if you took, you know, kind of what I was saying before when you're going into business or doing whatever you want to do, I don't care if it's a workout, kind of just coasting in, learning as you go along, but hopefully, you know, at the same time, not letting a lot of things kind of come in and in, in interfere. Because, you know, a lot of times, I don't know if you've ever done this before, even in a relationship, so I, I teach a Mastering Self-Confidence program and... The one thing I tell everybody is, my God, stop jumping in the relationship so quickly. You know, if you're going to be with somebody, just chill. Throw a girl in the friend zone. Let her throw you into the friend zone. Figure things out. I don't care what anyone says. Become friends. That's not always going to work out. I know we're going to get caught up in the moment. We're going to have one night stands and blah, blah, blah. I get it. But for the most part, the slower usually you go into a relationship, I believe, the better off you're going to be. And the main reason I believe that is because it takes time to figure out who you're with or who you're interested in what or what that person's about. Now, a lot of people may say, I don't know that person until I live with them. I get that too. But if you've ever been with whoever, a man, a woman, whatever the case may be, and you kind of jump the gun sometimes, and I'm sure a lot of us are out there, you didn't really realize what you were getting involved in. Things went too fast, and before you know it, you're in a position or a spot in your life that, how did, you, how did I get here? How did I allow myself to get here? If you maybe would have taken your time a little bit, I'm not saying you have to put the brakes on entirely, but if you learn more about this person and kind of figured certain things out, you can prevent a lot of problems. You know, you've probably been with people, for instance, back to relationships where you're like, holy shit, you know, say you didn't end up with that person and down the road you find out who they truly are or what they've done or whatever the case may be. You're like, man, I dodged a bullet there. And I, again, I'm not telling you to fall asleep at the wheel here. What I am telling you to do is, when it comes to doing anything in life, nowadays, I think, just chill out. I did a podcast with my buddy, Robert Beninati, and we were talking about, you know, information overload. You know, again, back to being extreme, so many things are kind of coming at both of us because we both have a YouTube and a podcast and we may do something in the future together. But it's like, it's an overload. And things at the beginning I get a lot of times are exciting. No matter what you're doing, you want to keep going and going and going. But please, no matter what it is in life, pay attention. I, the last thing you want to do sometimes in life is make a mistake, especially in a relationship or financially or physically. And what I mean is physically you go in there, your balls to the wall, you may do something where it damages your body for the rest of your life. You could get injured or you may lose too much weight. You may jump on juice, gain too much weight. Who knows what can happen? Same with in business. You may jump in. You may be investing too much money. You don't know about certain things. That could go for real estate. I see it all the time. The stock market, everybody you know, meets somebody or gets all this information and they think they're going to kick it in the ass. And it's almost like a gambler a lot of times who learns how to play blackjack or dice and thinks they're going to go to a casino and wipe it out and they, get, you know, they walk out of there decimated. Same situations. And same like I just described in a relationship too. Just please put the brakes on. Cool off a little bit, gather as much information as you can, and then start making your moves. And don't, I know a lot of people are like, don't think of failure because if you think of failure, you're going to fail. Listen, man, you got to think about what's going to protect you. Because a lot of times, especially during, maybe I'm not saying all the time, but depending on what age you're at, one fuck up could be a game changer for the rest of your life. Okay. One bad deal can destroy a lot of things. Not only you, your family, uh, you know, a lot of, and I've seen this over and over again, especially when I was involved with gambling and things where guys get way over their head, they lose everything. And before you know it, like the emotional 
financial toll it takes. And I think that happens with business. It happens with a lot of people. So I just want to do a, a podcast on this. So just be aware. All right, I'm going to leave it there. If you get a chance, man, check out my YouTube channel. I've been doing a lot of different things. Um, I guess you could say a lot of them were fitness driven. I just did something on people always getting offended, which is really ridiculous. Everybody being too sensitive now online. Um, but I've done podcasts with a lot of different people as well. Uh, different interviews with people in many different industries, including, you know, there's fitness in there, there's actors, directors, producers, people who've lost weight. Um, just many different things that I'm interested in. And sometimes I, like I was mentioning earlier, I have a co-host, Robert Beninati, and we go through different things too. And we're um, we're on LinkedIn, or I am, so is he. I, I think he is. Well, anyways, I'm on LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. So take care and uh, please be aware.